Hello, and welcome to In His Image broadcast, hosted by Evangelist Stacy Rhodes. Glory, give him glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. For have not I declare that the whole earth shall be filled with my glory. I've spoken and said that the whole creation is groaning, waiting for the adoption of sons. Hello, and welcome to Image Broadcast on today. Hi, I'm Evangelist Stacey Rhodes, and always I want to say happy Friday. I hope God did something great, something miraculous for you, just to show you that he's God and God all by himself. He's a good, good father. You know, that's why I love him so much. I say it because he's just awesome. He's just simply amazing. He's marvelous. He's wonderful. He's everything that he says. He is and so much more. So today I just want to send a shout out to God because God is just truly amazing. You know, not just because of the things that he do for me, but for the people around me, for the community, for the neighborhood, and just any other person. I don't. It could be a random stranger that I don't know. I love to hear the testimonies of the Lord because he's faithful and he's just at all times. Um, on today, I want to send a shout out to my pastor, Pastor Sam Moore, Lady LaShawn Moore, my Conqueror's Church family, of course, um, New Covenant of Peace, World Impact Ministries as well, Bishop Tony Russell and his beautiful wife, Valerie Russell, Pastor Ruben and Darnella Edwards. Got to send a shout out to them and the early happy birthday, Pastor Ruben, for tomorrow as well. Um, Send a shout out also to Faithful Priest Ministries as well, Evangelist Denise over there, um, awesome woman of God as well. So many different people I like to send shouts out to. Of course, Dr. Sanjay Lakani, uh, Dr. V. Robinson as well, Dr. Edward Dabrowski. I think I've seen all of them in the last couple of weeks. Uh, just want to send them shouts out. Just wonderful people, period. They always bless me and my family, so that's why I always send them shouts out. They really are good doctors and good dentists. Um, also, I want to send a shout out to Kingdom Outreach Ministry as well, KC3. Pastor Kawan Simmons and Erica Simmons got to send them a shout out over, uh, over there. I want to send a shout out also to the Undrafted Word, Saved by Grace Ministries as well, Apostle Williams and his beautiful wife, Cherie. I want to send a shout out to them just as well. Uh, Sister R.G. Johnson got to send her a shout out all the way out of state. Uh, just love her. Great woman of God, my mentor, my prayer partner, just everything that I need. So I just thank her for just always throwing into my life, into my family life. She's always been a blessing from day one. She just set you straight, y'all. She's one of them people that just tell you the truth and keep you straight. Apostle Kevin Binion, I also want to send a shout out to him just as well. We're going to take a moment to pray, and then I'm going to get into the Word, the word of God. Trish, Tristan over at Sanofo Gas Station, my guys over at Basha Oil, can't forget them guys. Mary and Mindy also, got to send them a shout out as well. Sam at Cars for Less, like I said, all these people are just up and down Gross Beck Highway. You just got to stop in and meet them. They're just good people, period. Uh, I thank God for all the good people that he sent to me. I just love the Lord, and that's why I love him for even little simple things like that. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, that this is the day that you have made, and we'll rejoice and be glad in it, Lord God. Truly, you are Alpha and Omega, Father. Oh, we worship you on today, Lord God. We love you on today, Lord God. Father, just because you're God and God alone, Lord God, I thank you for all the wonderful things that you do for me and so many others, Lord God. But, Father, if you didn't do anything else, you're still God, and you're still sitting on the throne, Lord God. And we love you for that reason alone on today, Lord God. Father, we just ask you for clarity of heart, clarity of mind, Father. Give the people an ear to hear, Father, what you're saying on today, Lord God. Now, first of all, that you love them on today, Lord God, that you love them with an everlasting love, Lord God. You have their best interest at heart at all times, Lord God, that you're thinking of the things that they need on today, Lord God, that they stand in need of on today, Lord God. Bless them according to the purpose. Bless them according to the plan that you have called for them from the foundation of this earth, Father. We bind all forms of anxiety and fear on today, Lord God. Doubt on today, insecurities on today, Lord God. Anything that comes against the word of God, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you sent your son on the cross to die for us, Lord God. That we can have life and we can have it more abundantly right here in this earth, Lord God. So, Father, we're standing on the midst of who you are, Lord God. We're standing on your word, Lord, saying that you be glorified, Father, in the name of Jesus, O God. Send forth healing on today, Lord God. Salvation on today. Deliverance on today, Lord God. Whatever your people stand in need of. Increase on today financially, mentally, and spiritually, Lord God, Father, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Send resources on today, Father, for whatever the people are standing in need of. And Father, we'll give you glory. Father, we'll give you honor. And Father, we'll give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. We say thank you, Father, and amen. And um, God was just talking to me actually on Sunday of last week. He had gave me this word a while back. And he said, who turned the truth of God into a lie? In Romans 1 and 25, verses 
25 through 32, it says, Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forevermore? And amen. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change their natural use into that which was against nature. And likewise also men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burning in their lust one to another, men with men. Working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their errors, which were met. And even as they did not like the retained God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. To do these things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malice, whispering, backbiting, hater of gods, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventor of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, unmerciful, unplaceable, who knowing the judgment of God, that was committed, such things are worthy of death, not only to do the same, but in their pleasure of doing them. And you know what God was showing me about that? He said, what made the word of God, which is all truth, a lie to you? I think so many times we go through so many different things in our lives that we kind of question the word or question our situation for the word. But the word is true. It's saying that the word is true and everything else is a lie. And God said in his word on today, what stopped you from worshiping him more than the things that you're worshiping? Are you worshiping your, are worshiping your job, your children, your home, your car, your ideals, your visions? Um, you know, even like I said at church, even in ministry, sometimes we take what God has given us and we distort it. Nothing should be worshiped more than God. Nothing that he has given you. He gives you those good things for your use. For your advantage. He give it to you because he's a good father. And he wants to bless you. He doesn't want you to take what he has blessed you with. And make it bigger than him. Make it your, your idol. Because God is faithful and he's just. And he's a jealous God. He says that. He said I'm a jealous God. He don't want you to put anything before him. He gave us these things that we may be blessed by them. He gave us these things that we can see the blessings of God in our life. Not for it to become so much and have so much power over us that we're not willing to lay it down for God. That we're not willing to lay down the things that he has given us over him. He said, no, they worship the creature more than the creator. He is your creator. God always knows what's best for us. And, you know, so many times I find ourselves in many different situations where we run into people and we're asking them for their advice or what they think or how they think we should do it. But if God is our creator, wouldn't he know us best? You know, we wouldn't take our, our Dodge uh, car to a Ford dealer. You know, we wouldn't take a, the Cadillac down to, you know, to, to, to the Ford station. You're going to take it to the dealer that it came from because you want to know that you already know that they made it. They know exactly about it. But so many times, we'll, we are the creation of God. And we find so many other ways to try to figure out our situations instead of going to the creator and saying, hey, Lord, what's best in that situation? I found myself in a situation this morning, and, you know, I just love God, and I loved God because of who he is you know we sometimes think that we're born to the wrong families and you know our family may be dysfunctional and we think that we are not shouldn't be in that family but do you know God send you everything you need and that's what I love about the Lord the most that he makes sure you have every single thing you need even when the enemy try to turn make it for your harm God said I'll turn it around for your good because he's faithful and he's just you know, I was talking to my daughter early this morning. She's going through some things with anxiety and fear. And I told her, I said, you know what? God is faithful and he just, and he loves you. I can pray for her, but something she had to walk through herself. She had to understand that God loves her more than anything. That the devil has no right to her or her life. God breathes the breath of life into my child. God tells me and anything that related to me, as far as I'm concerned, when it's blessed. Nobody else. The enemy has no right to my child. And, you know, I, I stand in agreement with her, but I wanted her to understand it for herself. I want her to understand how much God loves her. Not me, not because of my prayers, but because of her. He loves her as her own entity. And that's what I love about God. I don't care what the situation is. He loves you for who you are. He knows exactly what you're going through. He knows exactly what you stand in need of. And he said, you know, he'll go before you and make every crooked way straight. So whatever your battle is on today, I want you to go back to worshiping God, not your situation. I don't care how bad it look. 
how bad the storm is, how bad the enemy want to say it is. Nope. Go back to the word of God. God said, I will bless you and everything that's connected to you. Four generations down, he'll bless our children, our grandchildren. God is faithful and he's just. All they have to do is turn their heart towards God. That's all they have to do at the end of the day is turn their hearts back towards God. And I told her, I said, God loves you for you. you know, yeah, I can pray for her. But at the end of the day, I want her to know that God loves her just as much as he loved me and anybody else on this earth. Because the Bible says he's not a respecter of a person. So therefore, he has love for her. And she just got to understand that even with fear, that she can overcome her fear. And I told her, I said, you know, God has sent you exactly what you need because I had to walk that walk with anxiety. I had to walk that walk with fear. So I know. I know how she feels. I know the torment that come with it. And it's telling you all these different things about what, what's going to happen in your life. You, it'll make you think that you, can, you don't even have breath in your body, even though you're talking. You know, so it, it gets to that place where it torments you so much that you can't think. And, you know, that's what the enemy job is, to one, make you reckless, to one, make you tired, to make you overexhausted, because then he can manipulate you. He can talk you out of the word of God. But at the end of the day, God's word is true, and everything else is a lie. So, like I told her, that the worst thing that can happen if you felt you were dying and you died, you're still going to Christ. So you still, are, you still win at the end, in the end. And I had to learn that for myself, that my life is not my own. And that's what I told her. At the end of the day, he's just trying to get you to understand that he's greater. He's greater than every situation you're going through. And if you call on him, he will truly answer you. So I want to tell you, if you are in a place on today where you need something from God, where things are really not the normal, and it seems like the enemy is trying to overwhelm you, so much is going on. I know so many people are going through so many things. But at the end of the day, no matter what you're going through, God is faithful and he's just to answer your prayer. He said, if you call on him, that he'll answer you. So don't worship the problem. Worship the creator. When I get in a zone and I get to that place where the enemy is trying to up, up, upset me or aggravate me, the first thing I do is lift my hands and I start worshiping. Because I know in worship, God can speak to me. I know in worship that it's just me and him. Nothing else matters. And then if I can get to that place of worship, God is faithful and just to show up every single time. But I also know if I didn't get to that place of worship, if I called on him, that he was answering me. The worship is just to tell him how good he is to me. To worship is to just tell, to show him how much I love him. The worship is to show him that I don't care about the problem. Father, I just love you. And as long as I can keep my mind stayed on you, you said that you would give me peace. And that's what God wants. He wants us to be in a place of peace when the world's in chaos. He wants us to be in a place of peace when our life has been turned upside down. You know, it, it, it's, it's hard to get to that place, but it's doable. It's, it's a place that's available for you. That God said that he would give you the peace that passes all understanding. So when everybody else is running around in chaos, you'll be sitting there calmly saying, Lord, I love you. And I thank you for the opportunity to show up. You know, because when you're in a place of this turmoil or anything like that or you feel like you are behind God is just waiting to move that's one of those things at time you can expect God to show up and to show up God has never taken you backwards he's always trying to add to you and he's always trying to do what's best for us so many times we think that you know our lives are going backwards no the devil is a liar we are moving forward every single day that we wake up and we have breath in our body and we can worship the Lord we are moving forward he, he's already adding to us. He said, I'll go before you. I'll make your crooked way straight. He's, he, he, he has an answer for anything that we're going through. You know, so we have to get to the place, like I said, that we're not worshiping things, people, situations, property, but we're worshiping God. Lord, no, your word is true. Everything else is a lie. The world is doing what it wants to do. And everything that it says in this scripture is happening right now today. It's happening right now today. And we got to understand that. Where everything that every, these people are out here doing, he said, no, it's not natural. It's unnatural. And I know we love people. and I'm not trying to harm anyone. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. But it's unnatural for a woman to be with a, a woman. It's unnatural for a man to burn with lust for men instead of wanting a woman. It is unnatural. And that's what God is saying. That we have got to this place where everything goes. Anything's all right. But in reality, it's not. 
God is faithful and he's just. His word is true, like I said. And at the end of the day, it's unnatural. Now, in, in verse 28, it said, And even as they did not like to re refrain to God in their knowledge of God, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do these things which are not convenient. And, you know, I asked God about that. I said, well, Lord, you know, so many times we think a reprobate mind means something mental or it means like we're mentally ill or something disturbing it. Nope, it means to allow you to do what you want to do. It's just that simple. It's, it's you doing you. It's you doing what you want to do, that what you think is right, that's nowhere near right, that you are continuously walking in it and doing it. So it's a day and a time in our lives. Like I said, well, well, God will say, okay, I'm, he's, he's, he's a gentleman. He will not force himself on you. That's what I love about God. So we have to make right choices. We have to make better decisions for our lives because at the end of the day, God is faithful and he's just. So I already know when certain things, like I told my daughter about her anxiety, when the enemy keeps saying death, 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 or the enemy keeps saying you're sick, sick, sick. That's not what the word of God say. The Bible say, no, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. The Bible say, well, long life will I satisfy you. So that's what I choose to quote. When the enemy had me in that place of fear and going through that thing about sickness and death, I said, no, no, Lord, if I die, I die. But I'm not going to die in fear, Father. I'm going to die knowing, Lord God, that I wasn't fearing at that moment. So, Lord, whatever it takes. To remove this fear out of my life. I thank you that you're doing it. I lay prostrate on my flow and just cried out to God. I said, enough is enough with this torment, Father. I can't live another day like this. So, Lord, I need you to set me free. And he was faithful and just enough to set me free from that. And I thank God for that. That's why I can tell you he's faithful and he's just. And I can tell you what the Bible say because I had to learn it. I didn't, it was nothing I just read over and over. I had to tell it to myself till I believed it. Nope, God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but a little power to sound mine because that fear had overwhelmed me. And I said it until I believed it in my heart. So if you're dealing with anxiety on the day, fear, no, God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but a little power to sound mine. He said, be anxious for nothing. Because that's all anxiety in. It tell you right then and there something happening. No, he said, be anxious for nothing. So we had to get to that place where we understand that the devil is a lie and God's words reign true. So like I said, I don't care what the situation is, need to be your home, your job. He always got something better. He always has another plan for you. Like I said, whatever the enemy means for your harm, God will turn it around for your good on today. He's looking to show up and be God in your life. He's looking for some time for us to just move out his way because so many times we won't let God in. We just want to always help him. He doesn't need our help on most, on most days. He don't need our help. He told me clearly, that I don't need your help. Uh, so the moment I decided to let go and let God, the situation turned around. Like I said, I've seen God show up in so many situations. That's why I can stand on the word of God and say he is God. It's my own life experience that tell me that he's God for me. And, you know, I love him for that. And he loves you just as well. He wants to show you that he is God and God alone in your life. So give him that opportunity on today to be God of your life, to be the Lord of your life. Trust him. He said, trust him. Lean not to our own understanding, but acknowledge him in all our ways. And he will direct our path. He know what you stand in need of every single day. Every single day. He know before you know. And if you are calling out to him, He's already sending an answer. He's already sending this, uh, the, uh, the situ a way to fix the situation. He's God. He's faithful and he's just. So don't worry about what you're going through. Don't worry about how you're going through it. But call on God and tell him what you need. Because he's faithful and just to send it to you. I don't care what the situation is. It need to be financial. It need to be spiritual. It need to be physical. He's already willing to work out that situation for you so on today i just want to encourage you and keep you encouraged to let you know that god loves you that his word still reigns true even when you are overwhelmed it still reigns true even when you're going through his god is still his word is still working on your behalf he knows he sees he god he knows it all he sees it all and what he's doing is trying to fix your situation for him for you so let him allow him to be god no trust in him Know that you can trust God. Because sometimes, like I said, we get to the place where we don't know. And like I told my daughter, I said, you don't trust him yet. Because if you did, you would know that every breath you take come from him. 
because he's good, he's faithful, and he's just. And, you know, she just, I, I, I love her, and my heart was crying out for her because she was crying out, and she's my child. She's in pain. But I said, Father, whatever it take, whatever it take, Lord God, to get her to see you, you are God and God alone. I don't care, you know. I know a lot of I, people pray for their children, but my prayers for my children, shake them. Shake them, Father. And I know it sounds harsh, anything short of death, until they cry out and know who you are. Because I've seen God do it. I've seen him do great things. And, you know, he said, what is it that we gain the world and we lose our soul? <laughs> it's, it's not worth it. I don't want to be running around here pre preaching to the world and my kids are losing their souls. Nah, shake them, Father. Whatever it takes to get them to know that you are their God. Not just mine, but you are their Lord and Savior. That, Lord, they can call on you and that you will answer them as their own individual prayers. So I thank, you know, God for that. You know, I love them. And, you know, I, I, I always want to give people opportunities to um, offer salvation because it's so important. You know, you have to know his word and you have to know him in order to call on him that he will answer you. So, you know, it's about being saved. You know, it's, I know a lot of people say Easter's coming up, but, you know, Easter is every day to me. You know, so um, I want you to know that you have to confess him as your Lord and Savior. You have to ask him to come into your life. You know, the Bible said we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross and that he rose again. We are, you know, saved. Um, so we have to understand that. You have to ask him to come into your heart. You have to ask him to come into your life. And, you know, it was one of the greatest decisions that I ever made. I thank God for it because it changed my life. It changed my life for the better, you know. So, again, if you don't know him, this is the perfect opportunity to give your life to Christ. Um, once again, all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross and that he rose again. And ask him, say, Father, come into my life. Take the mess that I made and do something great with it, you know. So I thank him for that, and I hope that you took that moment to call on him that he's able to answer you that you may receive all the benefits and the promises of the bible because that's what it's about that's how you have to know his word so once again i would just want to let you know on today that god loves you he's faithful and that he's just and i just want to read this scripture one more time because i want you to get in your spirit that everything that's in this scripture is right now happening today and when he asked who turned the truth of god into a lie the world did you know, they want to make you think that God is a liar, but he's not a liar. His words still reign. He said heaven and earth will pass away, <laughs> but my word will never pass away. So he said in his word, you know, wherever two and more touch and agree and ask in his name, that it shall be given. So when you get you a prayer partner and somebody to touch and agree with you, he said, oh, whatever you ask for, it will be given. So you got to know that if you are crying out to God for anything right now, he hear your prayers and he's willing to answer them. Not in your timing. Not in the way you choose for it to happen, but the way he wants to get it done. Because he's God and he's God alone. He said his thoughts are not our thoughts, nor his ways are our ways. Our minds only can think so far. But God is amazing. When we're sleeping in our bed, he's working things out for us. When we're worrying in our mind, he's working the situation out for you already. And that's something you have to understand and comprehend. So on today... If you have any situations, I want you to put it in your mind. I want you to put it in your heart. And we're going to take about two or three minutes to pray so God can show up and be God. Because he's God and God alone. Father, we thank you. We thank you on today, Lord God, as the people get what they need in their hearts, Lord God, and what they need for you to show up for, Father. As they put it in their mind, Lord God, that this time, Father, they'll put it in your hands. So they won't pick it back up, Lord God, and try to figure it out later, Lord God, like I did so many times, Father. But, Father, they will trust in you with all their heart. And they won't lean to their own understanding, Father. But, Father, they will trust with you, Lord God, and knowing that you are God, Father. Knowing, Lord God, that your word is true. And you said, Father, wherever two and more touch and agree and ask in your name, Father, that it shall be given, Lord God. So on today, Lord God, I touch and agree with my brothers and sisters, Lord God, that are standing in the need, Lord God, of you, Lord God, on today, Lord God, that are standing in need, Lord God, of many different things, Father, that you already know what they need, Lord God. That's what you said in your word, Lord God. So, Father, on today, Lord God, Father, I decree healing in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Heal them and make them whole, Lord God. And, Father, not only are you healing them and make them whole, Lord God, Father, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, but, Father, allow them to hear your voice, Lord God, and the things to do, Father, the things that they need to change, Lord God, that is, you have called from the foundation of this earth, Lord God, Father, in our health, Lord God. 
in our situations, Lord God. Father, touch right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, move like you've never moved before, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, everything that the enemy mean for our harm, Father, turn it around for the good, Lord God, because that's what you said you'll do, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, you said you will bless us according to the purpose and the plan that you have called from the foundation of this earth, Lord God, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that you said, Lord God, Father, in your word, Lord God, Father, if we first de seek the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, Lord God, that all things shall be added unto us, Lord God, Father, let us chase nothing. But let everything chase us, Father, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Because, Father, we're chasing after you, Lord God. We're standing on your word, Father, believing, Lord God, Father, that you are God and God alone, Lord God. So, Father, as we stand in the midst of who you are, Lord God, bless according to the purpose. Bless according to the plan that you have called for the people from the foundation of this earth, Lord God. Nothing missing, Lord God, and nothing broken, Father, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. You're able, Lord God. And not only are you able, Father, but you're willing. Ha <laughs> ha Lord God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, Father, we bind the hand of the enemy on today, Lord God, that wants to lie, Lord God, and tell us that your word is not true, Lord God, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that you, we will stand in the midst of your word, Lord God. We will stand on the midst of who you are, Father, believing and knowing, Lord God, that it is so. Hmm. It is so in our homes, Lord God, you're blessing our children, Lord God, our grandchildren, Lord God, our communities, our neighborhoods, our homes, Father, our jobs, Lord God, our property, and everything that's connected to us, Lord God. You said by no means, Lord God, should anything harm us, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. So, Father, we're standing on the midst of who you are, Father. We're asking you all today, Lord God, to have your way, Lord God. You know what every individual needs, Lord God. You can count the numbers on their head, Lord God, of hair, Lord God. So, Father, that's how much you lo love us on today, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that we are the apple of your eye, Lord God. Yes, Rosa. We thank you, Father, that you will just have your way, Lord God. And, Father, we will give you glory. Father, we will give you honor and we'll give you praise on today, Lord God. And, Father, we won't uh, uh, put the stuff, Lord God, as idols, Father. But, Father, we'll bless you. We'll bless your holy name on today, Father. So we thank you on today, Lord God. And, Father, we give you glory once again. We give you honor, Lord God, and we give you praise on today. And we just want you to be magnified in our life, Lord God. We want to let you know we see you high and lifted up on today. In Jesus' name we pray, Father. We say thank you and amen. So on today, once again, don't let the word of God become a lie in your life. Don't bless the, the stuff. Bless the creator. And if you can bless him, you'll miss out on nothing. He's faithful and he's just. So on today, I want to say thank you for joining me as always. I want to let you know that I hope your weekend is blessed. I hope God do something great, something miraculous for you that only he can do. And I hope that your prayers answered throughout this weekend, that you see God high and lifted up. Yes, because that's who he is. So we just want to bless you once again on today. I want to say thank you. I love you. Have a blessed weekend in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as we close, we say thank you for joining us, and we hope you join us next week on the In His Image broadcast. May your week be blessed and full of favor in Jesus' name.